the tobacco industry. It's one of the most evil industries out there today, and that's really saying something. They sell deadly products to anyone that they can, and spread propaganda to hide the dangers. And they kill their most loyal customers. These days though, we have a lot of ways to fight back, as I outlined in the other parts of my project. However, if you go back a couple decades, you will find that the tobacco industry pretty much went completely unchecked. In the 60s, around 42% of Americans smoked regularly. That's a huge percentage, but how did it get to that point? Well, there's a few key moments in history where the tobacco industry used marketing to such great effect that they were able to get nearly half the population to smoke. I think learning about these moments will help us understand why tobacco products are so prevalent in Western society. They are also great examples of how evil the tobacco industry is, which, if you haven't been paying attention, is kind of the point of this entire project. So in this video, I will walk you through the top three most evil, yet effective, marketing ploys of the tobacco industry in history. Number three. The Exploitation of the World Wars So, when World War I started, millions of soldiers all across the world were experiencing PTSD and trauma for the first time. Truly an awful, awful thing. But, for the tobacco industry, an opportunity. Tobacco Industries had a plan. They teamed up and convinced the American government that cigarettes were essential for soldiers, as it would help calm them down, make them better fighters, and help with their mental health. Um, and the American government believed it. So, they ordered cigarettes to be part of rations for soldiers. So, for the millions of American soldiers out in the trenches at that time, um, each one of them was given cigarettes. And the tobacco industry got paid for each one by the American government. The tobacco industry had successfully landed the contract of a lifetime. Their sales tripled in those four years of war. And after the war was over and the soldiers came home, they of course were all addicted to nicotine. So, they became loyal customers of tobacco companies. Cigarettes were a huge part of the war. They were used as currency sometimes, and almost every soldier smoked. Eventually, when World War II came around, it was the exact same thing. Tobacco companies teamed up with the American government, and they sold cigarettes to millions of more soldiers. That's not all, though. In 1941, during World War II, Germany banned public smoking because they knew the health risks of cigarettes. This was another amazing opportunity for tobacco companies, though. They spread the message that Germany banned cigarettes, and suddenly, smoking them became an act of patriotism. To smoke cigarettes is to rebel against the Nazis. Um, all the leaders of America, most of the leaders of the free world, in fact, did smoke, too. Roosevelt, Stalin, uh, Mussolini, whereas Hitler was vehemently against cigarettes. It was another huge move of propaganda that turned legitimate public uh, safety precautions into another reason to smoke. Number two, the response to public health concerns. When the first Surgeon General's report on the dangers of smoking came out, the tobacco industries were terrified. This was the first time that the dangers of tobacco could actually become well known amongst the public. So what did they do? They tried to spread as much doubt as they could towards those claims. They did this in as many ways as they could. They bribed doctors to endorse cigarettes and say that they were perfectly good for you. And camel cigarettes even went as far as to claim that they were the most popular amongst doctors with their slogan, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. There was technically evidence to back this claim because they paid a bunch of doctors to endorse camels and they gave them each a pack of camel smokes for free. Tobacco companies also got their spokespeople to talk publicly and debate the scientists uh, claiming that there is danger to smoking. The tobacco representatives would basically bully the doctors on television and um, run smear campaigns against them off of television, saying that any doctor who disproves of smoking was cheating on their wife or had false credentials. Uh, they personally attacked these doctors for doing their job. All of these things were not enough though, so eventually um, tobacco companies started the Council for Scientific Research to start researching the dangers of smoking. After much testing, they found enough evidence to prove that there were no dangers of smoking. Of course, this, these tests were completely funded by the tobacco company, and they were completely biased, and they were completely wrong. However, all of these things put together were enough to convince smokers that maybe tobacco wasn't that bad, maybe the doctors were lying, and maybe they could keep on smoking without any worries about their health. Um, I'm sure that there was a lot of doubt <laughs> among smokers still, that tobacco was dangerous for them, but addiction outweighed that concern. So, in the end, the Surgeon General's report and all the doctors speaking out didn't do much to change tobacco sales until they took much dr more drastic um, actions in the future, such as putting warning labels on packaging and putting more out more advertisements for anti-smoking. Number one, 
Edward Bernays and the Freedom Torch Movement. This story starts with a man named Edward Bernays. Edward Bernays is not a very well-known man, but he is basically the forefather of all harmful propaganda of the tobacco industry. When World War I started, a young Bernays wanted nothing more than to fight in the war. However, he was flat-footed and was nearly blind, so the military basically didn't want anything to do with him. That didn't stop him from supporting his country, though. He helped the war effort by spreading pro-war propaganda around the country, and the people listened. Edward was really good at spreading propaganda, and he quickly got a reputation for being someone who could convince anyone of anything. This pretty obviously caught the attention of the tobacco industry, and after the war was over, they contacted him for a job. In 1929, the president of American Tobacco contacted Edward. They wanted to hire him to get women to start smoking. See, around that time, women seldom smoked, so getting them to start would basically double American Tobacco's customer base. But why didn't women smoke? Well, Edward realized after some research that smoking was generally seen as a very masculine trait, and for women to do it was very unfeminine and basically unacceptable in society at that time. However, it was at that same time that the women's rights movement in America was actually picking up a lot of steam. Edward Bernays saw an opportunity. He would turn smoking cigarettes into a feminist statement. He did this by hijacking a very large event called the New York Easter Parade. He did this by talking to a bunch of women's rights activists who were going to be part of the parade and convinced them with a silver tongue to light up during the parade in a show of pro-feminism, pro-smoking. Um, he also organized press to cover the event and deliver that message all across the country. He also got his secretary to pretend that she was part of the parade and then when press interviewed her, she delivered a very carefully worded message written by him um, that talked about how smoking was feminist, and it worked like a charm. Women all around America very quickly started lighting up in a show of feminine power. A year later, American Tobacco's most popular type of cigarette, Lucky Strikes, had tripled its sales. Edward Bernays had successfully turned cigarettes into a symbol of women's rights. Edward Bernays really laid the groundwork for the type of scummy advertising and propaganda that the tobacco industry would one day become known for. And because of that, he is in a way behind all of these scummy marketing tactics they've used since. And so he should really be given credit for the terrible things he has done. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it gave you some really good insight into how the tobacco industry started its marketing practices, how it became such a huge industry, and how evil it really is. Um, goodbye.